Randy, you have a very solid foundation of fundamentals for your chip shot. I would even say textbook. Feet are close together, slightly open stance, weight on left side, gentle arm swing that isn't wristy. In fact, I'm surprised your short game statistics aren't better than they are. I went back and looked at your rounds for August 6th, 8th, 9th, and 14th. And during those rounds, you had a total of 51 chip or pitch shots. This is your short game stat chart. Out of those 51 shots, you missed the green only six times and hit on the green less than nine feet away 10 times or 20% of the time. I then wanted to see your result of the other 35 shots that were on the green more than nine feet. This chart shows the results of all 51 chip and pitch shots. They are distributed into four zones. 10 times you hit your best chip shot less than three yards from the hole. That's inside that white circle. 11% of the times or six times, you hit your worst shot and missed the green. The other two zones were between three and six yards and more than six yards. With the chipping fundamentals you are showing me in this video, I would expect that the majority of those remaining shots would have been less than 18 feet and not more than 18 feet. But based on your scorecard, 28 of those 35 shots were hit on the green further than 18 feet away or six yards. Based on this, one of two things is true. These statistics are correct, and there are issues with your technique or club and shot selection, or your statistics are wrong due to incorrect tracking of the results of your chip and pitch shots. So first, I want to address the possibility that there is still some misunderstanding on how to track your putting. It is how you record your putting after you hit your chip, pitch, or bunker shot that will tell me which of the four zones you hit it. This chart will demonstrate how you should record both the short game and putting section after you hit your chip or pitch shot. For example, if you are off the green, shown by the white circle and red X, and hit a chip shot less than three yards from the hole, you would put a mark in the less than three box in the results section for the short game. And since now your first putt will be attempted from a distance less than six yards from the hole, you will not record the result of your first putt. The sections shown by the red box are only used for recording results of putts that are attempted from a distance further than six yards. So in this example, the only putting data you will record is how many total putts did you have on this hole. And in our example, I put two putts. Here is an example of hitting your chip shot on the green between three and six yards. As you can see, you would mark an X in the three plus box in the short game section. Now, how do you record your putty? In this example, your chip shot was also less than six yards, which means that your first putt will be attempted from a distance less than six yards. So once again, you will leave the section inside the red box blank and only mark the total number of putts for the hole. In this last example, you hit your chip shot on the green further than six yards from the hole. So you correctly mark the three plus box in the short game section. But now you will record the result of your first putt in the putting section titled putts over six yards. Because now your first putt is being attempted from a distance further than six yards. If you make your first putt, you will mark the end box. If you miss your first putt but it stopped less than one yard from the hole, you will mark the less than one box. And if you miss your first putt, but it stopped further than one yard, you will mark the greater than one box. And remember, with Power Tracker, everything is in yards, so less than one or more than one means yards and not feet. One further note in this putting section, you will never record the result of your second putt, only the first putt. And then you will conclude by marking the total putts for the hole. The Power Tracker software system will automatically know the result of your second putt by the total number of putts you record. If you missed your second putt, it would be known by the fact that you would be recording a total of three putts for the hole. So in conclusion, the key to always recording putting data correctly is to only make marks in the inbox, less than one box, or more than one box when your first putt is attempted from a distance further than six yards from the hole. Anytime you chip or pitch on the green closer than six yards from the hole or 18 feet, then you would leave the putts over six yards section blank and only record total putts for the hole.
Now I recognize that the data you recorded in the four rounds I looked at may have been done correctly and you didn't need this additional review. But because I was so surprised how good your technique was and expecting more chip shots to be hit closer than six yards from the hole, I needed to be absolutely sure you are doing it right before you enter too many more rounds. Now regardless of whether you're recording these shots correctly or not, I do want to go over some things that will help you hit more shots closer to the hole. I believe the short game shot from around the green are the most difficult and complex part of the game of golf. If I'm 150 yards from the hole, I basically need to learn one swing with one club. If I get fancy, I might choose to learn two or three swings with one or two additional clubs. But with chip and pitch shots, you need to learn a hundred swings. You need to learn to swing with different clubs. You need to learn to swing with different length back swings. You need to learn with different ball positions. Swings with different tempos. You will learn a basic fundamental sound chipping swing, which you already have, and then begin experimenting and testing that swing to different targets. Experiment with different clubs. Experiment with different ball positions. This is a diagram of a short game test you could do. Pace off five yards from the edge of the green and stick a tee in the ground to mark where you're going to chip from. Show on the diagram with a red X. Then from the edge of the green, walk into the green 10 yards or 10 paces and stick a tee in the green for your hole. Or you could use a training stick you may have seen me use in some of my videos. You can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. I recommend not chipping to one of the holes on the green because that will be different from day to day and you wouldn't be able to repeat a standardized test on a different day. Also by creating your own target away from the holes you won't be bothered by others which allows you to have a better practice. From the hitting area you have chosen, select a club you want to test and score. For example, you could use the one in your video. First, practice a little with it until you feel you are dialed in as, as to how you want to hit it. Then hit nine balls for a score. Hit all nine balls to the target T before you walk up and score them. My game uses a simple scoring system for the nine shots. For each shot inside of three yards, you will be, it will be called a birdie, and you would score a minus one, just like real golf. To score those shots, walk up to the target tee or stick and pace three steps towards any ball that is close to the three yards to confirm yes or no for the birdie. Pick up all the birdie balls. Now, for any shot that is further than three paces but less than six paces, give yourself a par or an even score. Any shot that is further than six paces but on the green, give yourself a bogey or plus one. And any shot that is not on the green, give yourself a double bogey or plus two. Now as an option, if you want to create an eagle circle of one yard for a score of minus two, you can. Now your final score will simulate a nine hole golf score and your first goal is even par. The pros in this game would hit all nine shots inside of three yards for a score of nine under. Now do the same game with a different club. For example, if your first club was a sand wedge, do the test again with a pitching wedge. Practice first for about five minutes until you're a little dialed in and then score the nine shots. You can use this same scoring system for different distances from the edge of the green and you can move the target tee either closer or further from the ten yards. Practicing for a score using different clubs, different ball positions, different backswings or tempo lets you objectively measure their effectiveness. But it also is a better practice session because it will simulate real golf in that you are always trying to beat your personal best. The next time you do a video of your short game, I would also like to see some pitch shots from further away, maybe 10 or 15 yards from the green. Good luck and please let me know your scores. Thanks.